In this MathSkills video, we'll cover important performance metrics, data that helps you understand how an app is performing and where you should spend time and effort to improve it. App startup and creating a smooth user experience have shown to have a lasting impact on user satisfaction and your app's individual business metrics. We have tools and libraries lined up to make it easier for you to inspect, improve, and monitor performance. Application startup are the first point of interaction with your user, and making a lasting, positive first impression is even more important at scale. So your goal is to make the app startup as fast, seamless, and smooth as possible. I'll show you what to look out for. Let's get started. App startup can be measured in three stages, cold start, warm start, and hot start. The startup type is determined by the point at which your app starts. A cold start begins when the application's process is created. This is what users experience when they install your app and launch it for the first time, launch the app after restarting the device, or restart the app after the system has completely stopped it for one reason or another. During a cold start, the application onCreate method is called. Everything your app needs to get started is loaded from disk. When a cold start begins, memory caches are empty as well. Cold starts are the slowest startup phase. You can easily experience a cold start of your app by force closing it and then opening it again from the launcher. When a cold start takes longer than 500 milliseconds, your users are going to notice and might get increasingly impatient, especially on high-end devices. So keeping cold starts as fast as possible is extremely important. The next startup type is called a warm start. A warm start is measured from the point where activity on create is called just before your view hierarchy is inflated. At this point, some resources such as strings and the first image resources could already be inflated and memory caches already warmed up. Warm starts usually take place when you open an app after the activity was destroyed, but the app's process is still running. This could happen if an app is running in the background for a while, but not long enough for the system to kill the entire process. Also, whenever an orientation change forces the activity to be destroyed and recreated, that's a warm start. The final and shortest app startup type is called a hot start. During a hot start, an app becomes visible to the user and enters the started state. Here, the first frame is ready to be drawn and activity on start is called. A hot start happens when the app was briefly in the background and is being moved to the foreground again, like when you're switching back and forth between apps. Due to the nature of startup types, a cold start takes the most time. Warm starts and hot starts will be shorter. All three startup types, cold, warm, and hot, are measured from their corresponding start points to at least one of two end states. The default app startup end state is called time to initial display, or TTID for short. It is automatically reported when the first frame of your application is ready to be drawn. You can see TTID by opening LockCut and looking at the Activity Task Manager tag. It will tell you how much time it took to display a specific activity. Because this is reported automatically, there's nothing for you to configure. Every app is reporting this by default. But being developers, you probably like APIs that enable you to customize the behavior. Well, I have good news for you. While time to initial display is reported automatically, the next state can be customized. It is called time to full display, or TTFD. TTFD is an optional metric that Android can use to further optimize your app startup time. It can also be used when you're running startup benchmarks on your app. TTFD is also visible in LockCut. You should report time to full display when everything is drawn on screen and the data required for the user to interact with the app is available. The API to use is activities report fully drawn. Report fully drawn is not tied to an activity lifecycle method, and you must pick the right time to call the API that makes sense for your app. And while it is important to call report fully drawn around the time your app is ready to be used, being absolutely precise on a frame level is not required. The now an Android sample app is considered to be fully drawn when both the interests and feed have been loaded. Once these two states are met, we call report fully drawn when the current local view is ready to be drawn. You can check out the code in more detail on GitHub. Now you know about app startup phases, when time to initial display is reported, and when to report time to full display. Aiming for less than 500 milliseconds to start can be challenging for some apps. In the upcoming videos, we're talking about how tools, libraries, and best practices can help you achieve this. Now let's talk about what to pay attention to when aiming to make the overall app experience smoother. Have you experienced slower choppy scrolling? 
well, it's not a fun thing to watch, and experiencing it can range from being mildly annoying to being exceptionally frustrating. We call this behavior jank. Jank happens when your app is too busy doing work on the main thread and misses the timing window to draw a frame on screen. Jank can happen when scrolling, but also any other time content is moved on screen, such as when animating between scenes or transitioning from one window to another. To avoid jank, you need to know what to look out for. The screen can be drawn many times per second. The amount of redraws per second is called frame rate. Traditionally, Android devices came with a frame rate of 60 frames per second. That gives you 1 16th of a second to perform work on the main thread before a frame will be delayed or eventually has to be dropped. But in recent years, the frame rates have increased to 90 or even 120 frames per second. And devices can also switch between different frame rates depending on the user's choice, developer's decision, or even the device's power or thermal state. Within our modern Android development guides, we recommend you optimize for a frame rate of at least 90 frames a second. This means that all the work in between frames has to fit in a window of less than 11.1 milliseconds, and that is very, very little time. The best way to achieve this is by keeping as much work as possible off the main thread. I'll leave you with important general guidance on measuring performance data. Always measure release builds. Release builds are what your users see when they start using your app. A release build has optimizations enabled that improve app performance drastically. The resource shrinker reduces the time it takes to load images and other resources. With minification enabled, the compiler makes your code more performant, reducing the time it takes to execute work. Start time and runtime performance vary depending on the device it is run on and how busy the system is at the time of measuring. So while startup might be slow on a low-end device, it can look just fine on a current flagship. And while not everyone has access to a wide variety of devices, we recommend you test on a real device which is representative of your users. The Android emulator has come a long way and is incredibly useful when developing an app. But the host system running the emulator can have very different performance characteristics than the device that might run your app. So always measure performance on a real device. Finally, measure twice, improve once. Make sure to gather metrics more than once before attempting to optimize. Code does not always execute at the same exact pace, even when running on the same device, depending on many factors. So by taking multiple measurements, your margin for error shrinks, and it's more likely that optimizations have the effect that you are hoping for. In the next video, Thomas will go in-depth on inspection. He will take you through best practices and libraries that help you collect valid and consistent performance metrics. All links to content I've mentioned in this video are in the description. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, click the thumbs up and subscribe to the Android Developers channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.